Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block Pizza. Sometimes you don't know what you want to do and you're just standing around somewhere. Well, you can change all that. Go to Gray Block Pizza and fill your holes. 1811 Pico Boulevard on the way to the beach in Los Angeles. Gray Block Pizza. Get that hitter. Today's episode is brought to you by Minimal Case. It's the world's thinnest phone case. Everything's on a diet these days, and phone cases are no different. I saw a phone case the other day vomiting in the bathroom. The minimal case is the world's thinnest case, just .01 inches thick. That's barely thick at all. Currently, minimal is having cases for the new iPhone XSs, XRs, and Pixel 3s. Those are in stock. The minimal case showcases the beauty of your phone. I'm talking thin. This isn't the type of case you can throw your phone or you're going to drop it down the stairs or you're going to, you know, clumsily let it fly off your lap and you're getting out of the car. That's not this. This is that sleek outer piece. This is that seal skin. This is something special, something thin for your case. And it comes with a 100% money back guarantee. If you are unhappy for whatever reason, Whatever reason, even if someone in your family is just making you mad and you want a refund for your phone case, they'll do it. No need to even send the case back. Get 20% off by visiting mnmlcasecase.com and use promo code THEO. That's promo code T-H-E-O for 20% off at mnmlcaseminimalcase.com. Today's episode is, uh, we're featuring today one of the last white heroes, I would say. You know, this man, he's got his own tequila. He's been drinking so long and entertaining so long that he, he didn't develop alcoholism, but he definitely, he had just developed his own alcohol. Um, And it's called Number One. And uh, he is, he is a, he is nothing short of a trailblazer. Uh, This man has been performing for a long time um, out of Texas. Uh, It's my mother's favorite comedian and one of mine as well. I'm honored to be actually going. This will be in his home today where we are. Uh, It is Mr. Ron White. Did you ever meet, this is probably before your time, did you ever meet Jerry Clower? No, no, I, I, I knew his work yeah. from uh, being a kid, but no, I never met him. Yeah. He was still doing gigs, and I'd see him, he'd come to like play high school auditoriums and stuff. Yeah. You know? uh, but uh, but I did enjoy the, the work, you know, yeah. when I heard it. Yeah, his albums. I love. I still listen to his albums. Oh yeah. Yeah, one of them is like one of the all time highest selling comedy albums ever. Like I, I, I think it's like greatest hits or something. But, no, but yeah, man. Thanks for uh, letting us be in here today. Sure. Welcome to Taterland. Yeah, I know, huh? The house that comedy builder one of. Right. And you got this dog here named Mustard. Yeah, mustard won't leave us alone. By the way, okay, he, he'll never chill. He'll uh, he wants you to throw that paw somewhere. I think we're probably going to have to lock him up. What do you think, mustard? He's handsome, huh? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and take him downstairs? Where's he from? What country or city is he from? He's from. Uh, he was born somewhere in Kentucky, and uh, I bought him uh, when I was living in Atlanta. Right before I moved out of Atlanta. I bought him for me, and I bought this Australian uh, shepherd for my mother. Oh, nice. They, she likes animals? Yeah, mother mother does. and uh, Well, she likes dogs. Yeah. I think they have a cat over there, too. But What did your mom do whenever you were growing up? Did she, what did, did your mom work, or just your dad worked? No, mother worked. Uh, she had a – the earliest uh, – one of the earliest memories I have is uh, she was a cashier in this little grocery store in this little tiny dirt town in Texas, and – and uh and my mother was beautiful beautiful wow and uh so she was man i guess she'd have been 25 or six in this little bitty dusty town they you know she was probably the only true you know hot babe in the whole city they wanted her to stay i bet yeah they did they took a hit with the, they took a hit the day my mom <laughs> left and uh yeah people but, don't realize yeah like uh 
you get kind of used to it in some of these bigger cities, like seeing a lot of beautiful ladies, but in smaller towns, it was like that one girl, you know? Right. So you imagine the town Christy Brinkley grew up in like, Oklahoma. And they were like, uh, you're going where? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going too, okay? I'm going to follow Christy. Dude, I remember they had this girl in our town, this girl named Chrissy Hunt, and she wasn't even, I mean, she just was just on our street, but... She, she had like a chip tooth, but she was like the first girl that like showed me any attention. And I just remember thinking that took her to like another level, you know, the like chip I, and the tooth or oh, the, the, the fact that she cared. I think, I don't know which one, probably a little bit of both the combination plate. Yeah. That chip in the tooth. Let me know that, you know, she, you know, if we got in a relationship, she'd be able to go through some things, you know, I think. All right. There was some value in that. So, but, and you're married now. I know you're not married now. I don't know, man. I don't know what it is. The uh, no, I'm I'm not married. I'm going to a thing with uh, somebody that's claiming we were married, but we weren't. Yeah. So it's going to be a big, you know, it's a big uncomfortable thing. So, um, is that up? Is that is like a? Is that upsetting, or is it like kind of scary, or is it just? Well, you know, it. I was just hoping we could all be fair, you know. Yeah. And the fact that we can't be, you know, we, we uh, th that, you know, it's, it, and it was also, you know, family ties also, and her brother and I are partners in the tequila company. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, and I'm number one, really right? Good friends yeah. with her mother. And I've known them all for wow. 30 years. And um, my mother and her mother are really good friends. And so, you know, I hoped it wouldn't end up in, in, uh, in court, but that's where it's going to be. Dang. You know, somebody else trying to chip up chip a hunk off yeah for themselves and uh that's disheartening huh yeah, a little bit especially if it and did you feel like because i know you've been married before i mean I, I i met your most recent wife i just know that you had been married before i know that just from like the internet and stuff but i met your most recent wife at the comedy store one night um this is probably maybe a year and a half ago or something um she came by uh what she look like <laughs> uh she looked <laughs> i'm not sure if that she, was her or not. oh i hope it was uh I mean, this is, lady was like a brunette. Yeah, a um, Mexican girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She had yeah. like definitely some fire in her, right. you know? Right, no, she's a, uh, yeah. She's she, had, a, she was like kind of, yeah, she was, yeah. She looked like she was doing flamenco even if she wasn't doing it, you know? She's a crazy, crazy talented human being. Yeah. Uh, but we were never married. So, uh, oh, but right I, you know, it's, it's easier to say this is my wife than it is to explain it. Yeah. Well, she wouldn't sign up for any up, so I wouldn't sign up, you know. It's, yeah. It's just a... Uh, so it was kind of that's what most people thought, but uh, she's crazy talented, one of the best singers I've ever heard in my life, and uh, really, really dynamic performer. Is that one of the things that you think like attracted you to her? I remember hearing a girl sing when I was in junior high school, and it was the first time I'd ever heard, heard a girl sing and play the piano. And yeah, I would have married that girl right there. And I don't even know what she looked like. She could have looked. She could have been a man. First time. Um I saw her sing. She was uh, probably right at 32 years ago, and uh, she was like 19 or something like wow. that. And she was on stage with this band, just tearing it the fuck <laughs> apart. I mean, I'd never seen vocal performances to this day. You know, like she's a she was a classically trained opera singer. Yeah. You know, playing singing rock and roll to make a living, and and uh, you know, I, right then I was like. What? What do I? Have? What do I and have then to her do? brother stabbed me, and I kind of came out of it. Really? No. Oh, no. that's beautiful. That sounds like a Mexican. That I don't know what that's called. I feel like it's like a New Year's Eve. Like I don't know. I'd love to be Mexican next time. I think or Latino. You know, if I come back, I want my name to be Juan Pablo Montoya. <laughs> really? My name is Pablo Montoya. Yeah. What? would be great i could do that or i could oh, or maybe i could do vietnamese i think that seems exciting too you know hey, hey, yeah all right no no dude you're off you're off you're you're, you're young and it's showing now yeah you, you want to be one pablo Montana. you think i think so yeah yeah i could do that i think latino i would be i think i would be i don't know if i would be black yet i'll be black like in maybe one maybe the next time like if i did two or three reincarnations and then like got to pick different ones that'd be pretty cool if you got to go through all of them you know like all the ethnicities and all the. Well, you certainly have a little different perspective. Uh, 
You're just tired of this white guy shit, aren't you? <laughs> you yeah. mean, it's run its course for you. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it's like in America, it's kind of like, it's not run its course, but it's like, yeah. it's, it. you know, thing. it's just, it's getting wild out here, you know? It's just very, it's a lot, it's even more, it's way more diverse than even when I was young, you know? It's just, it's changing. I guess America's just always been like a changing place, though, you know? It's in a constant state of flux, that's yeah. for sure. What's the town that you grew up in like now? Same exactly. Is it? Same. Yeah, nothing changed there. It was a grain elevator then. It's a grain elevator now. Yeah. The um, Fritch, Texas is the name of the place. And and uh, I went back maybe 12 or 13 years ago. I I was It was long enough ago that they had brick and mortar record companies that were selling my records. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I came up and did a show for them in Amarillo, and they gave me this big white stretch limousine. And I have a half sister that's in radio there, and uh, Shay, and uh, so we got in it and went back to Fritch, was about sixty miles away. Wow! And I had been there since I was a kid, and uh, we were trying to find this little house that uh, Mother and I were talking about it today. That uh, the day before she had me, she was staining the floors. My dad, my grandpa built this house, and uh, and the next day she. Uh, she She's staying me. in the world. Yeah, right. She's staying the whole planet. Yeah. With me. So, uh, but <laughs> it's, and I, I, I couldn't find the house. And then I went back and I remember my mother's house, my grandmother's house is this great big house with these little trees. But that was, you know, 40 oh, something yeah. years ago. Well, it turns out it's a little bitty house with gigantic trees. Jeez. The trees got huge and the house wasn't ever big. I was just really little and right. it was bigger than our house. So I just thought of it as the big house with the tree. So uh, we, I found it, and then I, and then for some reason, I knew how to get to my house from my grandmother's house. Oh, that's and I, cool. I, when we drove straight to it, and and it's just this little bitty thing, and uh, maybe eight hundred square feet, little white clapboard house, and and uh, but they were carpenters, and they built a fence, and to make it fancy, they put a curved uh, top mm -hmm. on the fence. And uh, they went, it was low in the front and it got a little taller and it went back in the back, but they never finished it because my father got transferred and we moved to uh, Houston. So when I was, was it still six like that? Or seven, it's still not finished. Wow. It's exactly the same far along as it was when my that's dad and awesome. grandpa quit building it. Everybody else said, ah, fuck it, that's good enough. <laughs> I just leave it like that. Was there, like, sometimes if I go do stuff that's, like, nostalgic like that, like, it almost makes me kind of sad, you know? It makes me see, like, the time that I've been alive, kind of. Did you have any, like, kind of thoughts like that? Uh, well, other than how totally weird it is that anybody that plays Madison Square Garden or Radio City Music Hall is from that town right you know just such an obscure place to be from yeah i mean just uh you know it just uh, the odds are a gillion to one that somebody from that environment is ever going to go through or yours you know to find any kind of uh, fame and fortune in show business yeah just, do you look at the town as part of like the something that helped kind of like do you look at it, it as like a you know a, a place of like you know that kind of spurned you or something do you feel like that or you were just nah, it wasn't i was just that. a little kid there you know right. and and uh and obviously we didn't have anything but i mean i had a dirt yard and uh but the same as foxworthy he had a dirt yard we used to talk about that yeah we, we didn't have grass or anything we had some stickers <laughs> and some spiders and some we, we had Tons of horny toads. I even saw a couple of Gila monsters. None of those things oh, really? are still alive today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Gila, Gila monsters monster. might be. Those things live a long time, I think. There's yeah. a turtle that's alive. Like it said, it's been alive like 600 years in Hawaii. But it costs, if you touch it, it's 5,000 bucks, they said. It's like a fine you get. So it's got a little bank account. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. yeah. yeah. But no, I, you know, I, it's a, it's just this little bitty town and it just happens to be where I'm from. And, uh, you know, I grew up in, uh, the smellier part of Houston and, uh, Damn. and a house that my dad built and, uh, right across the street from the high school and junior high. So, uh, you know, I had pretty, you know, pretty normal, I think, uh, childhood. Yeah. yeah. Did you think like, cause I know you said that, you know, like with your relation, your most recent relationship, it was, you know, it was what it was, but I find in my life, like, it's like tough. 
I have a tough time, like, you know, really caring about other people. Do you ever notice that kind of stuff with you? Like just being as a comedian and being like a performer and stuff like that? Caring about other people? Yeah. Like at a real level where it feels like, I, I don't know. I guess I can't really explain it. I, I mean, I have a tough time like in relationships, you know? So I have a tough time. I, I, I think, think I must too. Because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> uh, here I am. Yeah. yeah. 61 years <laughs> old and single. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I guess, you know, I, I mean, I still have friends that have been friends of mine for 50 years since I was a kid. So yeah. that, those kinds of things have always continued, even though I lost a couple of them. And, uh, uh, and same with my, you know, with my mom, you know, her and I are still very, very, very close, but, uh, but I have a, you know, it's, it, it's kind of hard to get in with my camp, Yeah, you know, all my friends open guys that opened for me have been friends for 30 years and there was i got into comedy so right um do you feel like you're like 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 do you feel because i feel like i didn't think this when i started like dating and, and, and being in relationships but i feel just recently even i've noticed that i guess i'm just hard to connect with i guess it seems like like what i've started Is that what to, they said that's what they said yeah right they could be lying but do you ever feel like that like do you ever because i guess i start to worry that i'm not going to be able to have like a comfortable relationship in my life and i don't i wonder if it relates back to my work or if it's maybe just who i am you know i think it's just who you are yeah yeah it's uh i now you know i don't know uh i i, I always feel like i'm emotionally available uh, at some point until yeah. I feel like I'm not getting what I want. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm out of there. So, yeah. You know, I haven't been in that many long relationships, but, uh, um, but none of them seem to have worked out that great, except for, you know, the one, the, the mother of my son, who's still a very, very dear friend of mine today. And, and, uh, we were married for 12 years and she had my kid. Oh, wow. And we got a divorce. Uh, she got a dryer. Oh, that's it, huh? Yeah, we had a damn. It's like the price and is right, and uh, she got the dryer. So. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, wow. So, and do you uh, wish you'd have more children, or that's what do you have? You have a boy or a girl? I have a son. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Twenty eight years old. He's a great kid. I don't really have any regrets anywhere in my life. You know, uh, I am where I am, and I'm happy with it. You yeah. Know, I'm uh, sixty one and still have a vibrant career and you know, and uh that's a pretty rare yeah deal, you know. And uh and, and uh, people are always asking me, you know, when I'm gonna retire, which I you know, almost resent the question, but I hear it and I'm like, you know, the fans, you know, they'll they'll decide. Yeah. You know, if they if they're still interested in what I have to say, I'll still I'll still talk, you know. You don't uh, seem like that. I can't imagine, you know, not have, having a, a life that I don't do stand up all yeah. the time. You think you'll die on a tour bus? You think? Probably either that or a really nice hotel room or <laughs> yeah. uh, or my plane, you know, something. Yeah, it'll 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 have a it'll be loud. I know. I just have a feeling whenever it happens, it'll be loud. Yeah. Do you um? Did you have any time where you like took time off of the road and like? like where it started to get to you or something like that. I'm starting to notice some of those things for myself sometimes where I start to get a little bit rattled. Um, uh, you know, I, was it a learning curve? My, uh, well, you know, in a, in a way it was, I, I, you know, I did 15 years in clubs and, uh, before blue collar. And then yeah. the, the day that was released on DVD, I could sell out any venue in the country in seconds. And, uh, did you so, feel? Can you still feel that feeling in your in your sometimes uh, the that switch? That, yeah. Uh, that, Holy shit! Yeah, because we put a. Because I remember hearing stories about you. Like, there's all types of wild Ron White stories that you'd hear. Just you know that he was out there. You know, I mean, he was out there on the road. He was just always out there, just traveling, doing shows. You yeah, know? crazy, uh, crazy numbers. I thought everybody. I mean, I, most of the guys I knew were road comics, so yeah. it's different than an L.A. comic or a New York comic. The, the, usually, the the road comics live in the Midwest, which is, you know, if you if you want to be a comedian, that's where you need to go. You know, you need to go where you're doing nine shows a week, every week, and yeah. staying on stage, not out here, uh, just you know, f fucking wrestling for scraps. You know, yeah. And, uh, so. 
And I saw that kind of early on. I came out and and headlined a room I shouldn't have been headlining and got horrible reviews. And uh, and I went, I need to go back to the Midwest and sharpen the blade for another decade. Wow. And then see what happens. And so that's, that's, what, what, that's what I did. Uh, of course, the bad review was just something that made me scared of the area anyway. You know, yeah. Because it was pretty personal you know <laughs> people said don't take it personal i'm like well it's got a picture of me on it and making a face i swear to god i've never made but there it is and and uh the guy wrote it was uh, uh it was uh, watching white's 41 minute show is like watching a polar bear lumber around on stage oh. something comical or interesting happening only occasionally oh so you can tell how much impact that had yeah. on me because I still can quote it. Yeah. You know? And then, but then it was a, you know, the it was, a, you know, six by twelve inch thing with a big picture and yeah. And then in big black print it said, even when white's not blue, he's not funny. Ooh. He's not funny in big black letters, and I was like, oh no, that would hurt my feelings, man. Yeah, that's a stinger. And and I thought it was the end of my career, yeah. you know, because I thought that they'd fire me and uh, send me home. And I'm like, well, I did two shows already. Surely they got to pay me for that. And, <laughs> no. uh, You're figuring out how am I going to use this money for rent for the rest of my life? <laughs> yeah, right. It's going to be tough and uh, to stretch this out or even get home. And uh, damn, that must have been devastating, huh? It was. I, I went across the street. Uh, uh, I was playing this. It was the stop, yeah, last stop in Newport Beach, mm -hmm. and uh, and the the two weeks before I was there was Seinfeld and Slate, and and I'd been doing stand up for three years, wow. So I should have been beaten with a rubber hose, which I was. Yeah, I got beat with a rubber hose. That was the best thing that ever happened to me. Was somebody to go, shaw whop, you know, get to get a more realistic view of where you're at right, right now in this business and. And uh, and even go the, the years later, the guy uh, who wrote it apologized to me, wow. and because uh, it was so brutal. Uh, but quite frankly, he wasn't really nice to anybody. He wrote for the Orange County edition of the L.A. Times. Uh, sounds like Duncan a miserable Strauss. person. And uh, yeah, so he liked Fred Greenlee and a couple other people. But yeah, he, never heard of that guy. Not that he's a bad guy, no, but no, yeah, no, he's he, 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 but. He was a bit of a dick, but, yeah. but that's what it would have taken to get me to notice, you know, if, if he'd have washed it over, you know, if you know, you're there to review comedy. So right. you see a show that's not up to par, you, that's the one you chew on and uh, he chewed on it. You find like, I've like so many of these, like people that write articles and they're all from like New York or LA and they don't even have like a concept. I feel like sometimes and not in a bad way, they just don't have a perspective of what a lot of other people think is funny or where a lot of other people's point of view comes from. So a lot of times, like when I read a lot of articles, it's just always panning a lot of like my favorites is like, you know, these guys are animal, you know, these guys are animals or they're too loud or it's like, right. what are you talking about? These, some of these are just, it's entertainment. Right. Yeah, I read some really uh, unflattering things about, Chappelle show and i had just seen it yeah and, I'm, and it was written by some comic wannabe in australia yeah. and i'm like okay well i'm gonna go watch your show <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. i'm sure i can find it mm -hmm. and uh, i'll tell you how you stack up against Chappelle because i just watched his i just seen his show in santa barbara off the cuff we were walking by this theater and we was playing there that night and i bought tickets wow went in there and watched it uh it was fantastic. I had a blast. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm a pretty good uh, critic of uh, stand-up comedy. I mean, I do have a at least a triple doctorate in this art form. Right. And, uh, good point. So my opinion is the only one that matters to me. <laughs> Not some young dude that wants to go bashing on Chappelle. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason. So, yeah. Yeah. So in that point, you know, I, I think it's true. I've had people write very, very flattering things about me too. So uh, uh, I'm sure the truth is somewhere in the middle of that. Yeah. Do you um do you do you ever fear or have you ever <laughs> feared that like you would have written like your best material? Like, did you come to a point like that in your career? At certain points, you're like, this I'll never write something better than that. 
Uh, you know, I wrote Baby Duck Pussy Lip Tacos this year. I yeah. don't know that I've ever written anything funnier than that. Uh, the Four Seasons, dude. I've heard a- that, man. Anal, I've told anal, my friends about that bit, actually. Anal bleaching. That was a pretty good <laughs> bit. That's new. Uh, you know, it, it. I think it's hard to come up with a, for me, because I'm a, I do everything in story form. And uh, that's, it, you know, it, I find it harder and harder to come up with a, just a great new closer. Yeah. But, but just material as long as i go out and do sets and do the work you know and then uh then I, I you know i can still write but i've never been prolific at all you know and, yeah uh, ck comes out with a special every 12 months i come out with one every about every 40 months yeah and uh it's, his know, last one wasn't that good though the sex charges or whatever that was man you know his okay yeah I mean, I think yeah. So he's definitely going to be. Well, you know, and even he, you know, he and I have talked about that one time, and he says that if I that he, you know, I like to let him sit on the vine because I've seen these bits get really ripe, mm-hmm. and uh, so it's when stuff's falling off the trees that's that's, that's when, when you I'll, use it. You put it out I'll in special form, out. yeah. And, uh, but do you ever think that you were like? Did you ever worry that your whatever the thing inside of you or something that made you be able to be you your creativity did sure. you ever worry that that was going to you know just like dry yeah. up yeah and you know what what drives up is the effort mm. you know i can still do it you know in, in conversation i'm still very funny you know to most people and and uh uh but do i have the fear of course i have the fear you know i've, I've got a new netflix special out right now yeah but i don't have another show you know, so I was really scared to death that I was, I was going to go out and do a set and the crowd was going to stare at me and go, uh, really, Ron? <laughs> but it turns out, I, you know, they want to see it live and most of them haven't seen it. And uh, so it seems like since that come out, came out, I'm walking out on stage to full standing ovations and uh, and just murdering with that, just doing that special for them. And then they're cutting some stuff out of it and then doing some older stuff at the end, which I've never done. Right. And uh, and they're digging that. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, uh, you know, it's, it, it's definitely time to, to really work on replacing it. But uh, as long as they're digging what I'm doing, you know, it's, it's, I think that's my fifth or something yeah. special besides the blue collar stuff. And that's a lot. And, uh, you know, I feel like, and I'm proud of every one of them. I mean, I, I I think they were all, in some way, you know, pretty good work. Yeah. When you uh, was there, so going back to kind of that moment when things kind of changed and suddenly you could sell tickets, it was more like you know, your material hadn't really changed. You were just market, you were marketable, I guess, at that point or whatever the term right. is. Or yeah. people were looking at you now and seeing you. Yeah. What happened was that first blue collar album sold four million copies and. Uh, uh, and the, the, and that's a, one of the biggest selling yeah. albums of all time. Comedy albums was Blue Collar One and and Two, and uh, so you know, and and something you always do with comedy albums if you really like them, you really pass them around a lot. Right. I used to, I used to go everywhere with a copy of Let's Get Small in my cassette deck, so I could just play it for people and didn't take credit for how good it was. That's and, awesome. And uh, so. I mean, I was more famous then than I am now. Yeah. Uh, just because of all, you know, probably 80 million people or or even more than that had seen it. On Comedy Central and, even, you, you know, know. Comedy Central or bought the DVD yeah. or whatever. So so the impact it made on my life financially was unbelievable because, you know, I went from, you know, making, I think when I was on Blue Collar, I made about five grand a week, usually maybe a little more, yeah. maybe less. And then, uh, and then I went to making at least a quarter of a million a week. That's crazy, uh, man. Every week and sometimes as much as six. And uh, Jesus. So, but that part happened just like that. How big is that bag, the money? That, uh, that, it's a big bag, isn't it's it? It's a big bag of money. And, and I didn't know what to do, you know, at the... And Did you I buy a boat? Anyway, huh? Did you buy a boat? No, no, but uh, but I yeah, but I bought you know. I, <laughs> I, Did you I, buy I any? Was, I was nuts, you know. I was were you drinking like a crazy person, what smoking every? I'd be drinking mercury dope. with that kind of money, right? Well, that's the thing. I'd know? be drinking somebody else's blood, I'm dude. One hundred and forty dollar piss every morning, <laughs> yeah. and you know, it's uh, uh, 
Was that crazy? Was it crazy sometimes? Like to be sitting in a nice hotel room and be like, this is the dream. Like I'm now living in the, because before that it's a dream. You oh know? yeah. It's a dream I didn't even have. I mean, even though Foxworthy had blown up standing right next to me, I'd never had any expectation of any of that kind of stuff. Really? Happening to me, not one bit. I had no confidence that I was ever going to be more than a club headliner. And I like being a club headliner, Yeah, you know? So I didn't care, but I just, you know, I saw people that I thought were better than me not getting it. I see. You know, uh, Jenny, for one. I thought Rich Jenny was one of the best comedians that ever lived. And uh, and he would make it to clubs for, I mean, to the, from out of the clubs into the theaters for a little while, but he would never be able to mm. sustain it. And even though, the you know, his specials were off the hook and then, uh, you know, and then he ends up, you know, offing himself in a shower. And, and uh, so I... I've always, you know, kind of, kind of, I kind of, kind of just looked at it a different way. I'm yeah. Like, well, what about that guy? Right. If that guy doesn't get it, why would I get it? You know, and, uh, and I, to this day, I think Jenny's a, a better comic than me. Mm. And, uh, but it didn't, you know, it turned out the way it turned out. So, um, Do you- I, but if something has to happen. I, you know, I, I never knew why I made such a strong connection with these people. Uh, do you now know why? Do you have an, any idea now when you, I, I you know, cause it's interesting. I, like I said, you're my mother's favorite comedian and you're also, uh, my stepbrother's favorite comedian and they, they're 45 years difference in age, you know? Yeah. I, I, I understand what I'm good at and, uh, you know, that as far as being just a pace rhythm timing, uh, storyteller, uh, I, I know that I'm I'm really good at that. Yeah. Uh, I know I can work a microphone. I know that I can, I work very very subtly. I don't move very much on stage, and I, which makes you look at my eyes, which helps me lie to you. Right. And uh, <coughs> so like a polar bear, man. I know. I know. We're a goose. They got that part right, at least in that article. The yeah, polar the bear polar part bear. is kind of right. Yeah, they nailed it. They're they kind of captivating. Everything. They moves, you know. <laughs> they got the whole thing right. <laughs> it was amazing how accurate that thing was. And, uh, but yeah, it's interesting. I'm trying to think of what it is. I've seen you a bunch of times at the comedy store. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've seen your stuff over the years. I'm trying to think of, you know, being able to be closer to you now and see you at the comedy store what it is. Definitely the pace kind of, there's like a comfortable hypnosis kind of that goes on a little bit. Um, also, I feel like as a viewer, I want to get to know. I don't care about, I mean, I love the jokes and material's great, but I want to get to see Ron White. You know, like I want to get to see him just be him. And there's something that's, that's different than some other artists. You, you go to hear their jokes, you know, it's like, oh, they'll have a great bit or something. But with you, I feel like, man, it's almost, it is weird. It's almost like, yeah, a polar bear, you want to see them. They're kind of a, you know, not an endangered species, but they're a, you know, you don't get to see them everywhere. Right. Yeah, I I don't I I really don't know. It's uh, it, it just like I said, you know, I've I've seen people better at it than me. Yeah, and, uh, that uh, that didn't get what I've been given as a you know as an entertainer, and and so, and I I try to be humble and accept it, and you know, and I've never been arrogant about my skills as a as a comedian. Yeah. I, I, Although I know I'm really good at something, right? Because right. it did happen, you know. I That's true. Something, but but you know, you also got to have a catalyst to make it happen. And I had the perfect storm of a catalyst, which means, um, well, you may already know what it means, but um, yeah, it's like I that Andrea Gale one. movie. Yeah, I only did ten minutes up front, and then an eight minute long story. So that's eighteen. I got famous, famous, famous off of 18 minutes of material. Wow. So I've still got this stuff I've been writing for 16 years. Nobody's ever heard it to tour with. Right. So, so it was such a blessing. So I was really, really ready for that opportunity. Yeah. And then I got, and I watched it come and I'm like, well, if this works, <laughs> I'm going to get famous <laughs> off of no material. And most people burn their first yeah. hour. You know, uh, like like uh, uh, like Jenny did, or like Rich Scheidner did, or like uh, you know, they'll, you'll burn that hour, and then how's that second hour gonna you know stand up? Well, I didn't burn it, you know. I, right. And uh, you just threw a stick in the fire, and right. next thing and you know, the, you still had a bundle. And I went out and 
you know, had a show to, to tour with that nobody had ever seen. So, wow. And it was all, you know, polished over 16 years. And it was, you know, something I was doing in the clubs, you know, 290 days a year and uh, uh, as many as three sets a night. So, you know, I was... I was a beast of a club comic. Yeah. Oh, I could. And, I, uh, I can't even fathom. Uh, so, and that's why I still, you know, that's why I still do sets every night. You know, if you. Yeah, I've seen you up at the comedy store all the time. I'm always shocked. I'm like, wow. Because right? yeah, it's easy just to sit over here and, and uh, smoke weed and drink. Yeah. <laughs> which I will also, but. Yeah. Uh, do you have, do you have like a, um, was it hard to feel like deservant of your success and fortune not your success because that's kind of based on what you do is it hard to feel like deservant of like the accolades and stuff like you know what i'm saying kind of is that i don't i don't take them that serious right you know and uh when people if people want to tell me how great i am i yeah you know i i understand what they're looking at you know and and where where they're getting that idea right uh but i don't give it any credibility and and if somebody really hates my work yeah. i have a tendency to agree with them for a second you know i'm like yeah right well that's true right Whatever. that's so true i do I that too. take it or leave it myself but uh yeah why but is i think that? that's really kind of the best approach to come at it from anyway you know why is it that we can hear the one person that doesn't like it or we can notice oh, I can them see if i have one person in the audience <laughs> Of 5,500 people that didn't laugh, and that's the only person. I know. That's the only person I could see, you know. And what I, is that? Why is that, you think? Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just part of our genetic makeup that, yeah. you know, makes us so insecure that we have to get up in front of people every night and uh, get some attention. Yeah. You know, to, I don't know. Do I you, find it's fairly common, though, you know. I, I don't find any uh the, the really big comics that I know to be particularly arrogant about what they do, even though what they do is impossible to do. Right. Uh, you know, to, to build a career stacking words. Yeah. You know, and I'm doing it with a 10th grade high school education out of Fritch or Fuck whatever. Yeah. So, right. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. That does that part, you know, I beat myself up a lot for not having a formal education of any kind, but, but my brain won't do that. Right. It uh, my brain does this, and uh, that's <laughs> all it does. You know, it doesn't. I can't do conventional uh, schoolwork. Uh, just I was just completely lost with it, and uh, it just a really short attention span and attention deficit disorder. Yeah. And, I was dyslexic as fuck. And that's back and, when that uh, shit was freelance. Now everybody's doctored into it. Right, yeah. You back, were, now, yeah now back then, you just got on the short bus <laughs> yeah. and went to the retarded class and <laughs> Which I did, and uh, and eventually, you know, I started doing drugs fairly early, and and then uh, and and uh, I think my sister was a lot of trouble, so nobody really noticed what I was up oh, to. Oh wow, yeah, and uh, and, uh, and it, but it turned out I was up to quite a bit, and, yeah. Uh, so I I got kicked out of high school, and I said, "Were you well, bad? Uh, huh? Were you bad, or were you rebellious? What were you?" Uh, Were you mean? I was just trying to have some fun. I yeah. think you know. I don't know. Did I was like mean. saying no, stuff. No, not at all. I don't right. have a mean bone in my body. Were you a clown or were you a wordsmith? Like, what no, was your thing I that you would a, do? I was a clown, and uh, you know that was why people liked me. I was just funny. You yeah. Know? And uh, but you know, I was in Houston in the you know around seventies you know 71 there was a, there was a big psychedelic scene there oh wow and in uh, houston in houston yeah called Damn. allen's landing and my parents used to take us down there to look at the hippies i bet and so there were people on acid with flowers <laughs> in their hair i mean tripping yeah you know early you know just like hate ashbury but yeah in houston at a place called allen's landing and uh and uh, we, they literally would take us down there like they were zoo animals. That's awesome. You know? And it was bizarre to see it. I bet. And, uh, Dude, they used to have a thing about us vajip, and it was girls would put a vagina, uh, ass LSD in their vagina, you know? And it would be like this, you know, kind of this phase. It just reminded me of that whenever you were saying that. Right. Yeah, LSD wasn't super big buzz, but mushrooms were. And then sometimes we would get acid. But I can't believe that they had, I would never think of Houston as having that. No, well, number one, all Houston is just like, 
all was at one time it was as big around as a thimble surrounded by cattle ranches and as it grew it just cut into those cattle ranches when all those cattle ranches were full of mushrooms Mushrooms, that's right uh really strong mushrooms and you go to the end of any street in houston and that's where the cattle ranch is now and uh that's where the mushrooms are go out and you can pack pick a trash bag full of them oh yeah minutes I had no idea they were worth money somewhere in the world. You know, yeah. you couldn't give them away in Houston because we were like, oh, I'm good. Dude. Yeah. Yep, I'm good. <laughs> dude, I love doing mushrooms. Did you guys do them sometimes when you were growing up? All the time. Yeah. Yeah, all the time. I still do. Yeah. I now it's do. become, is it interesting to see how drugs have become, um, especially living in California, they're more of a medicine and stuff out here a little bit. Do you notice that? Yeah, I do. That's what I do with uh, shrooms is uh, I microdose every day. I, I do these little ca- a capsule of these uh, shrooms. A friend of mine grows them. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not enough to get you high. It's just enough to make you laugh at shit that ain't funny. Right. So it's, uh, to kind of turn you up a little. Yeah, a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. Do you Did you ever get like way deep out in them? Like when you were young, like we used to get lost, man. I remember... Like, I felt like I just, you know, melted one time. Like, did you guys ever get twisted? I brought a bag to a party one time, gave them everybody, and then started a game of hide-and-go-seek. A lot of people had never done them. And fucking, I don't know what happened to half those people, you know? <laughs> I'm sure they're fine. I mean, who knows, dude? Right. You know? Yeah, you know, it, it, well, I also have a dose, you know, for, for fun. concerts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's... You know, I got to tell you, even though it's a controversial statement, I believe at 61 years old, eat the mushrooms and go to the concert. You know, go have fun. And uh, because sitting around in the house uh, thinking that you're 61 years old, that's no fun. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we just went to Santa Fe and we went to this place called Meow Wolf. You ever heard of that? Uh uh-uh. uh. That's crazy, crazy stuff. Look it up, folks. Meow Wolf, Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And in, in it somewhere, it's it's a it's a maze. It's a trip maze. Mm-hmm. It was uh, built by the guy who did Game of Thrones. Uh, the writer. The yeah, I think the creator. Wow. And uh, and uh, you can fact check me on that, but I, I know it had something to do with somebody with Game of Thrones. And it's like specially just designed. What is it? It's a. Uh, it was a bowling alley at one time that they dug out huge. And uh, you, you go into a door and there's a house. And you go into the house and you look for clues on how to get to other portals. So you might open a refrigerator yeah. and then go through this stairway that it takes you into another world. And it's a journey. Right. And uh, depending on what you see changes your journey. Wow. And which way you go in this thing and uh you guys did it oh yeah we did it tripping balls <laughs> and, uh, but on those nights it was uh there's a four about a 400 person venue live music venue in it somewhere so uh that night uh a friend of ours named shaky graves uh from austin mm-hmm. was there great fucking show really man. shaky graves is so goddamn good is he as good as it gets it's a man yeah yeah, it's a he uh he used to play uh on the streets of Austin with a with a tip jar. And so his thing is he there he's got a suitcase that he built a kick drum in mm-hmm. and uh and then he's got a uh a low rise cymbal. And uh so he plays guitar with the uh and then he plays that cymbal with one foot and plays that kick drum with his other heel. Yeah. And uh, so it's a one-man band kind of thing. And he's just insanely talented. And now he sells out Red Rocks wow. in Denver. You know, he's a big touring act. And he has it for him. But he comes out by himself at first. And that's where his fans want to see. They just want to see him and that kick drum and that, you know. But he has a band that he does a lot of the show with. And then at the end of it, he comes out just by himself. And, just, and it is fucking fun dang uh so I, that's yeah, my message like you still to have everybody a lot of fun. tonight is uh do the mushrooms and go to the concert yeah. yeah don't stay home yeah go have some fucking fun yeah i guess people just get too caught up in their is it i guess it's their habits or they just yeah i wonder if people start to live into this idea of what they feel like it has to be as you as we get older you know i don't know i'm just saying yeah. just do the, do the mushrooms <laughs> yeah. go to the concert
<laughs> you know, I, I used to live in Mexico, and I and I lived on the American side of the border, McAllen, Texas, and uh, Reynosa, Mexico is the border town. I had a pottery factory there, and uh, this is. Uh, but before I moved to Mexico, I lived in a trailer, and uh, and this kind of a fenced-in community. But you could have campers there, so some people were living in those campers, okay. RVs and stuff. Okay. And and they, I think they think that's a good idea because they used to go camping and it was fun. What was fun about camping is you got drunk and you know whatever ran like yeah. So they're getting drunk every night. They're just sitting in these campers. They've decided to go camping for the rest of their <laughs> yeah. lives. And the only thing that makes it tolerable is just a just huge amounts of liquor. Right. That's that's what does it. And uh so uh they uh and they've they, it's usually a man and a woman. They got nothing else to say to each other. So yeah. we're, we're sneaking out, you know, because if one of them catches you, they got 65 years of stuff you haven't heard and they're dying to tell somebody oh, yeah. that they hadn't heard it. You know, they're looking for a new audience. Yeah. And uh which I get and uh so uh you know i i think they're right if you're gonna live in an rv you better be willing to drink because it's gonna suck you yeah. know and i live in an rv i mean it's a nice one but i still live in one you know do you feel more at home there a lot of times in the bus yeah i like it uh because it's usually got my friends on it it's always stocked i don't have to carry stuff to it i've owned it for 12 years or something like that and uh you know it's a big 45 foot prevost and uh was it scary when it started to feel like home some was that a little spooky or no you know i've i've always it seems like been able to roll with the punches you know wherever my life was at uh didn't seem to matter that much to me just uh whether I lived in a really nice place or didn't live in a really nice place. Now it would be hard to go back to yeah. uh, any other life than the one I have right now. And I don't have to. So, right. Uh, but, uh, no, it's just a big, you know, at one time, you know, my best friend who passed away. Was yeah. I remember manager, you told me about him. He's your road uh, manager. My son was my VIP guy. Alex Ramundo was my opening act. Great guy. Uh, the bus driver built the bus, uh, and uh so Damn. you know when i'd see my bus coming i know i know all those people are on there and i'd have great liquor and great weed and great company and and uh and it was a roving circus i mean we were doing up to 145 cities a year Damn. doing four and five a week and uh uh you know just but it you know it was just that's just what was going on in my life now i i still do a 110 which is more than probably most people do yeah and, uh uh but I just, I don't think I could, I don't think I could slow down without stopping, you know. Uh, hmm. I think that you still have to, like I said, stay on stage all the time to be yeah. good at it. And uh, That's true, actually. You I take two wanna, weeks off and you feel, if something feels wrong. Yeah. It feels different on your skin. I could tell it when I was doing nine cents a week. When I go to another club and have a day off, those, you know, getting used to the sound system. Well, you don't get to do that anymore because I'm in another town tomorrow night anyway. Yeah. But now they're big theaters, and most of them have somebody that knows what's going on. Uh, but I remember being better on Wednesday than I was on Tuesday, as, and uh, and sharper by the weekend. And uh, so, uh, so now at, at sixty one, and uh, you know, it's, it's still the same. You know, I feel like that uh, that it's it's easy to lose it. You know, you lose it, you lose it pretty fast. And, yeah. And I've really never seen anybody stop completely and ever regain any momentum particularly has that changed over the years where like if you've taken a couple of days off when you were younger or at, at a younger age and now at 61 that the 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 bounce back time is or has that always just been seemed like the, kind of the same a little bit well i mean i, I just kind of know how to do it now if i right. had a week off i mean i'm off this weekend so uh whatever set i did last i'll watch it uh, just to get it all floating back at the top again, you know, that's so you could snatch it yeah. real quick. So, but I'll just sit down and watch the last set that I did. And, and that usually that'll keep the first set from being too, you know, too shitty. Yeah. But don't go to Thursday night shows. That's what I'm trying to tell. Oh, really? Yeah. Eat the mushrooms, go to the concert. Don't go to my Thursday. Go show. to the Saturday. Do you miss, uh, or is there anything that you miss about being poor, you know, 
Like sometimes I start to think about that. Like as I've started to just make a little bit of money, like I start to wonder like are there things that I'm going to miss about or things that I do miss sometimes about, you know, having less money. I used to do some really fun stuff that I don't do anymore, like uh, tubing rivers and yeah. things like that. that. You know, really good poor people fun. It was real fun. You yeah. Know? And uh, so, and I blame it on how busy I am. But uh, you know, but I, you know, I, I was, I was already, you know, I already had a nice warm place to sleep, and I ate good food. The food, the same food I like now. And uh, you know, I it. Other than the, you know, the, obviously the houses are nice and the cars are nice and stuff like that. It's 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 not like I was, I I, I, I never felt deprived, right? You know, ever, right? And uh, so, uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's certainly different, and uh, but uh, you know, it's not like I was coming from. I didn't feel like my life was lacking before I made it, right? Uh, yeah, it was one night you and I were hosting the, um, you and I were judging the roast battle upstairs. You know, that Comedy Central show, they have roast yeah, sure. battle. So I got, you know, and you didn't know me from Adam or anything, and I was one of the judges sitting next to you. Well, they give out that weed up there sometimes, that speed weed company or something, you know? Right. A right. Little, yeah. right. So I don't know. One of us lit, lit up a joint and then pass it to the other one. And I took, after the second hit, man, I couldn't, I didn't know if you were Ron White, dude, or, you know, or I didn't know if I was Ron White. Fuck, I didn't know who was Ron yeah. White, you know? I and you was, kept I think, I think hitting it, it. Yeah, I think it was you, yeah. And you kept hitting it, and I kept getting so scared. I was like, holy shit, like, there's no way that Ron is going to be able to, you know, make it through this. I had to have, this is the only night ever, I had to have a girl drive me home in my car from the comedy store. And take me into my apartment and put me to sleep, you know, and not in a fun way, you know, like, <laughs> and that was, uh, and you must have hit it nine more times than I did. And that was this over two not, years ago? Yeah. Because you've been sober for two years? Do, yeah. do your fans know you're, you've are you been sober for two years? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking, it's fun and then it's not fun. Like right now it's not fun. You know, I definitely wish I could probably get, you know, smoke again with Ron White and, you know, catch a an uber yeah, it's not worth it <laughs> it's not i wouldn't do it but i have no choice <laughs> why do you feel I'm like these days you have to you have to drink or party i guess it's part of the lifestyle huh well i god i just thought <laughs> my, my whole new plan is eat the fucking mushrooms and go to the concert so yeah you know i i i used to do uh i used to drink a lot more than I do now, and I used to smoke a lot more than I do now, and I say I say that with a drink and a joint in uh, one in each hand. So, yeah. so it's really kind of hard to believe, right, right folks? <laughs> uh, but back when I was a Scotch drinker, I drank tequila now, and I, I own this company. It's called Number One Tequila. Yeah, hey, yeah. Man, here you go. People have said it's good. A lot oh, of my friends have it's tasted crazy. it. Crazy. What's in it? Agave and water. Damn. And love. That's it. That's it, huh? There are no other additives. There's two people just hugging by the vat while they're making it, I bet, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. I drank scotch forever, and, and late at night, I drink a lot of scotch. I start to get morose, which makes nobody horny. Yeah. Uh, just That's that Edgar Allan Poe syndrome, huh? <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, I, I think, know. yeah. He's always said morose. He always said, yeah, things were dark. You know, he was always right. writing about people dying and everything. Right. Yeah, my son's actually related to him. Is he really? Yeah. Damn. Some kind of great, 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 great uncle. Of Edgar Allan Poe? Edgar Allan Poe. Damn. Yeah, the Raven, baby. Anybody else in the family that's... uh? No, it, I you don't You and think... Edgar Allan made something, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, me and Edgar Allan came up with it. He's, <laughs> pretty, he's a pretty fascinating <laughs> human being, too. He's very engaged in uh, in life yeah. and, uh, and liberty and the pursuit of happiness and... Uh, that's cool. Do you wish you'd have had more children, or, or do you consider it still having some? No, I know absolutely no, 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 no. I mean, every once in a while, I'll date somebody with a couple of kids and wonder if I could possibly take myself to a place where you know I'm actually you know responsible for somebody, which I, which I certainly didn't when I had my son. Yeah. You know, so I doubt I'll do it for somebody else. Right. Uh, my son, literally, I, I got joint custody. Of my son. Oh, congrats, when he was two man. and a half uh, years old. 
Oh, really? Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, and I didn't even deserve half, but but I got half. So literally, they're like, "All right, you want half? Here you go. Here's a baby. He's all yours. Uh, knock yourself silly." And I'm like, uh, "Wow!" Uh, so I'm 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 touring around in my van. I got a van. I'm driving the gigs in and. What kind of van was it? Like an Astro van? And no, it was a custom van. Sprinter? With a TV. Oh, that's nice. And uh, I mean, nothing like what I get now, but right. it was still, you could sleep in it if you wanted to and had a place to, you know. Anyway. And so, you had the baby in there. So I had a baby touring with me, me and this little baby. I mean, I don't know why that's not a movie. Yeah. And uh, literally. I'm in comedy clubs walking up to waitresses right before I go on stage going, hey, could you just hold him for about 45 minutes? I'll be right back down. Don't give him beer. He likes it. Just don't give it to him. And uh, and and he was so hip to the comedy scene. And sometimes I would take him on stage, you know, anything to get get a laugh. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we, he was maybe f five years old. Was he a good baby? Oh, he's perfect. And would you feed him? You just feed him just road food, just chilling, really? McDonald's. Yeah. And, you know, whatever, you know, because I needed him to play in those plastic balls while I had nursed his hangover. Yeah. I mean, I was, it was horrible. I, re I really give myself a lot of grief. Uh, but he had a great stepdad mm. and uh, and still does. Uh, a, a guy named Terry. Well, I shouldn't say his name, but... Uh, I got Ter Terry. Terry's are usually yeah. fucking weird, right. I think. Right. This, the this ones I've come across, no offense if somebody's Terry, but this one was good. Yeah, this was amazing. And, uh, you know, we're, you know, he and I are opposite ends of the spectrum. And, and I don't think for a really long time uh, he particularly liked me at all. And, uh, uh, and he had a couple of daughters that were one a little younger. I think a little older than myself. So he was already raising children. He was, he was into the fatherhood raising, thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, he was an accountant and a. Oh, geez. Yeah, he was doing this, it. Yeah, he's a damn adult. Right, he's an adult. And I'm a fucking club comic, you know, Ooh, with a baby. Can't even imagine that. Well, I can't imagine what made him ever yeah. agree to it. You know, because they could have just talked bad about me enough in court. To get him to not do it. Did you fight for joint custody? It seems like I must have. Yeah, because how do you get it? I don't know, but, you know. Because I wouldn't give you a baby, you probably. It, you can't dial it back, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't go, wait a minute, how about. Let's do 20%. Yeah, 20, let's do 20%. <laughs> uh, 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 I think that's a Josh Blue bit, but. Uh, but it. But it all adds up to who he is now and uh i mean he, we lived in mexico when he was five years Dang. old and uh he took him from the road to mexico this to mexico to, to make pottery and and uh we lived in reynosa mexico which now you wouldn't go in there with a uh armed really it's wild huh uh, but when i was there it was great i mean it was it was uh magnificent best food best people uh the uh he and i ate at this killer taco stand across the street from this little church which was across the street from our house and a cute little community and and uh we loved it there and does he have fond memories does your son have fond memories of it or does he like hold that kind of stuff against you i you know i think that he has fond memories of it and uh I, and i you know it's a really 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 good question uh, but it doesn't feel like, I mean, because we talk every day and we end every conversation with, I love you. Yeah. Everyone. And, uh, that's cool. So I think if there ever was any animosity and, and also, he also got to see my life completely broke. Don't have a dime. I don't have enough money to get me in the water park. Yeah. I'm going to tell him I'm sick because I got $12 and 16 cents. And, um, uh, yeah, and you can't stand there as an adult and fucking look into a water park, dude. That's the right, not yeah, a good look. You can't come up with the cash. So, well, so, no, even just as an adult standing there right. watching children play is, you know, even back then it was wild. But yeah, I can't imagine right. that, like telling your son that, and you guys having to find creative ways to spend time together. You know, my dad used to take us to funerals in town, dude. To fucking, you know, 
for something for us to do. You know, like I think it's. Do you resent him for it? Because I would. <laughs> uh, you know, I think in some way, like you're saying, maybe as an adult now, I'm 38 now, I see somehow it probably helped me. And at least he did something. You know, he right. made some effort, you know, because that's the thing. He made some effort. He could have just done nothing. You know, he could have just. Oh, here, here I was telling you this story and I got off the track where he's. He, he's f four or something like that. And uh, I said, okay, it's time to go to the club. And he goes, he goes, all right, Dad, but I don't want to go on stage tonight. I just want to hang out in the green room. And I said, oh, this club doesn't have a, a green room. And he goes, oh, it's a funny bone. <laughs> I'm like, that's pretty hip that he realized that, he that the funny bones suck <laughs> dog dicks for dimes. <laughs> Uh, that's yeah, hilarious we can't, we can't spare 200 square feet to make you guess that's baton rouge funny bone man that's where i started out at in that place there was i mean everybody was related in the crowd you know this was this was kind of a, down in baton rouge and it was fun everybody was just more football fans than they were comedy fans in a way yeah. you know it was just hard to get them to be quiet to listen but right but also at the same time they had 325 people in there every show every show yeah it was yeah, fun. I played that, and I played the Grin Room. Uh, there was a one called the Grin Room there that was uh, ancient. In Baton comedy Rouge? In Baton Rouge, yeah. Yeah. I always loved that town. That town parties. Uh, you, you, you can start partying in that town, and nobody yeah. will stop you. <laughs> yeah. Nobody. Everybody will egg it on. Uh, we were just down in New Orleans playing the Sanger and, uh, and just had a great goddamn time. How's that theater? They just redid it last year. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. It's as good as it gets. And, uh, and, as it, and, you know, it's, it's still, well, you know, I do my Friday after the show dose of mushrooms. Yeah. And then, you know, Bourbon Street, still Bourbon, still Bourbon Street, Street, just a hint of vomit and piss and a bunch of fun. So. Yeah. Is there a place where you don't tour anymore that's just like, and no particular reason, but Vicksburg, Mississippi, yeah, just because the venue sucks and the, and the, you know, the crowds are just, you know, they're, I mean, I, I'm sure that 99.9% .9 of the, I'm sure that 75%, <laughs> I'm sure that 66% of the people, <laughs> the too many fucking knuckleheads, huh? Oh, God. And it was just, it was bad one year. And then I came back, I'm like, the fuck am I back here for? And but I love the South, yeah. You know, and I and, and and I don't see that to be the case everywhere. But it was just it's one of these things where this guy's just going to take over the world. There's three guys that are security guards right down there, and I'm like, throw him out. They're like, that, that ain't our job. I'm like, <laughs> what's your fucking job? You gonna talk to me like that? I'm like, now I'm having an argument with the security with the security guard wow. about whether or not he can throw out this fat fuck in the front. <laughs> and, and and then it got worse. I mean, worse where all all the security guards were like, "Man, you can't come into this town." And, I, and, and then this big old redneck, I told you, I, I'm like, all right, okay, yeah. you guys win, you can have it. So there you go, Vicksburg. Yeah, there's some places it is kind of wild. Like there's some places where the crowds, like I in Minnes like I love going to Minnesota, but sometimes I feel like they don't laugh as hard sometimes as other places. Um, sometimes in the South, when it gets too like you get somebody that's too rural, they just don't know how to behave indoors. You know, um, those are some things that I'll notice. Uh, has I think comedy, you know, in general, comedy audiences are more educated than ever, and so I think I find more good. Yeah. Than. Uh, than than bad I, 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 you know because they're watching so many things on tv that most people really kind of get it you sit there and listen and respond to what they say yeah and um even though you know not all the time but still even with even with the big crowds that i'm playing now i find especially within the last couple of years you know they've been pretty well behaved and and i'll have i'll throw somebody out of my show in a new york second yeah. if i can get somebody to do it yeah but i'm not gonna do it <laughs> yeah. myself you know I, i'm not gonna change shirts and go down there with a taser dude in, in shreveport they used to have a club there shreveport funny bone and they had a man there and after the show he would tase you he was like an off-duty cop if you wanted him to you know you could do it with him but and i remember getting fucking tased one night me and another guy they talked me into it and how'd that feel not good man really surprising that you did it no just the exact moment of it it even 
It's more they, surprising it than you more, think it would be. Right. You think, it looks unpleasant as shit. I mean, people <laughs> yeah. make this involuntary knee jerk. Oh, yeah. Spitile coming out of their... And you know what? I felt really young for a second, too, though. I remember that. I remember feeling just there was this... You still look extraordinarily young. Well, I, thanks. Th- I thought you were 28. Oh, no. I thought I th- you were my son's age. Well, well, you had that long hair, man. You and I had ideal lesbian haircuts if you took your old one, you know? Right. I mean, ideal, man. Yeah, I, there, I, there's some. Uh, well, there's a new picture of me floating around. The mother sent it to me. It's uh, <laughs> and I'm at a campground somewhere, and I've got this long curly hair down to here with a Bob Marley T-shirt, a cigarette hanging out of my mouth, and you can. And I know exactly where we are because you can see a river in the background. So I know we're at the Lazy L and L campground on the Guadalupe River where we used to go tube all the time. Wow, so, uh, I, it's I a real that's picture. What maybe? Yeah, it's a real picture. Wow, and. Uh, the uh, I'll show it to you before we go. It's on the phone, but uh, it, 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 but you know, they, I, I think that kind of takes me back to even what I said. So I think I even mentioned tube in a river, and I think yeah. that's why I think of because I just saw that picture. Oh, I see what you're and saying. I remember we used to go 20 or 30 of us, you know, down there camp out, and how much fucking fun it was, yeah. And uh, and uh, I mean, just an unbelievable amount of fun, nothing funner. Look forward to it every yeah. year, couldn't wait to go. Again. I remember sitting in the tube, man, and people would you'd maybe stop off on a shore with a chick and hook up or something, or just keep drinking. Somebody would do mushrooms, somebody would drown sometimes. He was like, fuck it, you know, not my time to go, you know, you just keep cruising. One night, this guy's with a girl on the side of the uh, bank, just shooting a gun into the water and we're floating up towards him and i'm yelling i'm like hey and he's like he stops shooting and goes what and then starts shooting again in between my answer i said will you stop shooting that gun and he's like why and i'm like because we're fucking about to float by you know like that had never crossed his head you know somebody might not be hip to some small firearm (laughs) yeah i just don't you know i don't know how you know how much i could dodge right now but yeah, I used to I used to uh really really love that. Did was there you know, sometimes people invite me to do stuff and I feel like it's not as much fun as it as going to do comedy for me is going to be. Do you ever feel that way? Yeah. You, know, you know, people really they invite me to play a lot of golf and uh but I'm such a golf snob at, that I'm hesitant to say yeah, sure. I'll go spend four hours with you. Right. On a, I don't know how good it is golf course. Right. And uh, uh, so in that way, yeah, probably. But uh, uh, but is anything more fun for you than doing stand up though? Ah. Uh, nah, you know, I don't guess. You know, it's. It just so, it's just so much a part of my makeup and, you know, who I am and uh, that I just, you know, it's it, it's what keeps me alive and makes me feel young and, you know, uh, vital. And uh, so, you, you know, nah, I don't think anything's that much fun yeah. not for me. Or I, if, if it was, you know, You'd be doing <laughs> I, I would be doing that. Yeah. Yeah, you seem super vital, man. I appreciate your time uh, sitting and chatting with us. And um, yeah, we'll put, you know, obviously all your dates out and stuff. And yeah, man, I hope you keep going for a million more years, man. I think that's what we've got written down on the calendar right now, about a million more years. Yeah. You know, I think that that, uh, as long as I keep working and the fans keep keep, uh, coming out, I I see no reason to to slow down. It's, It's not that hard. Who was one of your favorite people that you ever got to make laugh? Uh, uh, Hicks laughed at one bit that I did. It was, uh, and it was, I forgot how it was set up, but it was going to the desk of the hotel and go, I need to leave a wake up call for seven o'clock. And the lady goes, Mr. White, it's past seven. And I said, no, the next one, you got another one coming around. <laughs> so Hicks, Hicks was, Hicks was at the show. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, and I didn't see him laugh. Somebody else said, oh, he really laughed at that. Oh, that's cool. All right. That had to lift you up, huh? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, for me, it was Damon Wayans. One night in the back of the room, I heard him laugh. And I'd heard him laugh growing up on television, and it just like... Oh, so you recognize the sound of it. (laughs) Like that. And it just was like, that's it. That's awesome. Uh, Yeah, Ron, thanks so much for your time, man. And um, and I'll see you around the comedy store. You got it, man. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, you bet. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and 
Shine. 